Hey everyone. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> Okay, so um, what we're going to be doing today is um, taking you through the plans and how it's evolved over time. Uh, so these were the original plans. Um, so to even get to this point, uh, there was a lot, a lot of back and forth with our uh, designer. Um, so through a friend of a friend, um, Ed was recommended to us. And um, he's come up with um, quite a good solution that suited um, our needs and requirements and everything that we requested of him. Mm. Um, so in this concept stage, um, I guess this is what we were aspiring to achieve. Yeah, basically what we said to him was that we wanted... Well, he came to us with a few ideas, but this is one we settled on. Um, mainly because it was a bit more modern. There was a lot of glass. Um, inviting the space from the inside and out trying to make that one um, the perspective of the forest and everything outside being um, the view you know the view and the centerpiece of the house um, and we also didn't want um, too much landworks um, and disrupting the natural flow uh, of the land yep so from those three original propositions we chose one um, that kind of represented the design that we wanted and this is the outcome of all the feedback that we've provided and that was probably over like a six month period of time so mm -hmm. it actually took a long time to actually get to the stage that you're seeing right now um yeah so that was with the values of light airflow and just being connected to the land around you and um, that was actually quite a difficult thing because um with the slope uh you're kind of having to put yourself a little bit more elevated um, without um, having those massive cuts in the land. Um, All right, let's show people the plans. Yeah, yeah, the actual plans. And that's talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, if it will let me, let's go down a page or two. Um, so, that was basically the, um, the front elevation. And... Um, it gives an idea of how the house actually sat originally on the plan. So we wanted something as light as possible, um, not disturbing the land. Yeah, and the whole idea was that you would still see the land there and what we would do is just flatten out this area here where I'm moving the hand and that would be where we would park the cars. So at this stage we didn't actually have an enclosed um, garage. We were just gonna have the house um, above and park underneath. Yeah. So that was the original plan. What about the and floor the plan? Go, uh, we, yeah, the floor plan is slightly different, isn't it? No, no. Uh, um, floor plan is pretty similar to how actually, it's ended up. Yeah. yeah, we've maintained that pretty well. Um, so we'll take you through to the uh, next stage of the process. So this is the mock-up of the house that Shane actually did um, because while the house process was happening the designing Shane was actually learning in uni, uni uh, how to do the design mock-up so this isn't the actual architect's plans it's it's Shane's interpretation of the original concept. of the original concept so I guess this was to help us understand the layout a little bit more and how it would actually come together um, so uh, using this program uh, Revit um, it, I guess, helps us understand the volumes a little bit more, um, plus so how is, everything actually comes this together. This was in 2015. Yeah, this is... So this is two years ago, actually, now. Quite a while back. Yeah. Um, so I guess it's like the slow evolution of everything that's coming together. Um, so what I'll do is I'll quickly show you what this tool has enabled us to do. Um... No, I don't want elevations. Renderings. This is probably the easiest. Um, so one of the things that we decided to do was um, maybe a bit of a concern to us was add privacy to the front of the house um, because that's where all the bedrooms are actually running. As you can see across here, um, what we've done is we've kind of mocked up a, a screen. So originally we were thinking uh, wood and um, now we've kind of evolved onto Core 10 uh, just for the reasons of low maintenance. Um, 
but uh, this idea is kind of still evolving and is still to be confirmed so it does take a long time to do all these things um the next one was our oh, layout um so it kind of gave us a, an easy way of visualizing how everything would actually come together and how the items of furniture would actually fit within that um so i guess it, it adds more meaning to the actual space itself mm. and um seeing it in this kind of more visual way of interacting with it um it adds more meaning yeah and once we looked at it we actually in the first plan i don't know if you'll remember but that right here was the laundry so in the hallway and what it actually did was made that other bedroom there smaller so what we did is we just incorporated the laundry onto the other side of the hallway to give um, a closet and a bigger space in the last bedroom and for me in particular I'm a visual person I need to see everything so when Shane comes with ideas my first reaction is always well how's that gonna look um, so this was really good for me to be able to see how all the different elements that we've been talking about um, actually right. look and not just a two-dimensional plan but but in 3d yeah so it is pretty helpful seeing it in 3d uh, what else do we have here uh, from the other perspective so what actually happened from these plans as well like um, putting it together is it's kind of like drawing as you draw things you deconstruct it more and you kind of have a greater understanding of how everything comes together so through this process uh, I think we've resolved quite a few um, ideas that may have been unresolved when it was actually built um, so that's quite important as well so we'll take you through the final plans now. Uh, so this is pretty much the final plans. Not the final final, but close enough. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, the cladding on the outside is still to be determined. But um, even... So the screen, actually. The, this is quite a while back, so... Yeah. This is, well, what's the date there? seconds so there, there was probably one done about mid-year as well so that's a year old that this plan oh it is too yeah oh wow okay so that's february 4th Anyways. um yeah we'll t we'll take you through it so as you can see uh the core 10 uh screening is still there um that's still to be defined as i said before um one of the things that we added from the well probably improved from the original yeah, it was airflow and light. It was airflow and light, yeah, because we're really concerned about the hallway not getting enough light. And, and you see probably the biggest change there is the addition under the house. Yeah, so this is all new. Um, the reason why we had to do that was for valuation. So um, they were concerned that we weren't providing enough floor space for how much we were actually spending. So the cheapest... Yeah. Well, the bank was also concerned about not having a place where cars would be locked up well that was actually a bit of a negative hit wasn't it for us in terms of value yeah yeah the valuation process i guess is quite stringent like um when they're comparing it to other houses in the neighborhood if you are considered inferior you're going to take quite a big hit um yeah so let's take you down a little bit more um, so that was just wind and sun that is the cut and fill. So mm, um, unfortunately, we had to do a bit of cut and fill. Nowhere near so as bad as what we would have to do work. if um, we built a project home. So still um, much better. And you can see that um, it fitted in between the trees quite well. We did have to take down one or two dead trees, but that was about it. So um, we're still encompassed by trees and we still have that connection with the landscape, which is awesome. Um, so what we ended up doing was um, we have taken the opportunity of closing in underneath the house um, to provide alternative um, living arrangements that are separated from the house. Um, so I guess this adds a little bit more flexibility. Um, we've actually considered turning it into kind of a, um, an ad hoc kitchen um, if it's not being used as... Uh, let's say uh, it, it's just going to be a flexible space really for now it's it's mocked up on the plans to be a fifth bedroom yeah um a granny flat so that really helped us with the valuation having a separate living space 
Um, it allows us flexibility if people want to stay long term, maybe an Airbnb option, um, but also if we're not using it in terms of living, um, it could be a studio for Shane to work on, design projects. Um, yeah, so it's really a, a spot that's, I guess the end result is to be determined, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. But you can see our hot little red mini that we don't actually own. Yep. Well, are you going to explain why there's a mini there? Oh, uh, or originally what they put in was their F100. Yeah, so the... the so R it looked really tiny, the garage, um, because of the scale. And uh, we were concerned when it went to valuation <laughs> that they wouldn't think the space better, was yeah. large. Um, it's actually really humongous. Like, so our designer kind of yeah, yeah. made a joke of it and put <laughs> the smallest car he could to make the garage look quite big. Yeah, which was pretty, pretty much appreciated. <laughs> um, so the actual floor plan. Oh, and by the way, these are the working drawings. So it actually details a lot more than the original concept. But these are still not the final working drawings. Yeah, yeah. these aren't the final ones. So it doesn't even include engineering and things like that. Um... But as you can see, we've got a big open area. Um, humongous deck. Deck was uh, the biggest thing for us because uh, we're not actually on the ground. Um, so um, being able to invite people out um, mm. outside was a really important thing for us. Um, so we here's... almost only built this section of deck as well because mm. um, valuation issues. What were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say if you can let people know actually how high. So if you're standing in oh. the corner of the deck, how high are you actually off the well, ground? let's go a couple down. Because I think it's about four meters, isn't it? Um, yeah, two. just just over, over three meters to the actual ground itself. Mm. And then so and, and that influences tops, the yeah. ceiling heights as well. And then up here, you're even like another... Um, I think it's about four meters to the height of the. Mm. So the height the actually in the ceiling. living space, the bedrooms. That that's just over three meters, and then the the bedroom spaces is two point four. So. Two point four. So it's cozy when you're in the bedrooms. <laughs> cozy. Well, no, no, no. Like. <laughs> Sound like a salesperson. <laughs> Turning small into cozy. Inside. No, but like. I don't know, when I go into the bedroom, I want to feel like I'm encapsulated, like it, it's, a, it's a feeling of security. Um, but in, when I'm living out in the main spaces, I want to feel like I'm free and I'm able to move around without mm. being closed in. But um, one of the awesome things that we were able to do because of the height in the um, living areas was that we were able to increase that to uh, the windows to 2.7 meters. So that's humongous. So um, hopefully that means that they won't kind of... Uh, you won't get that feeling of... Um, I don't know, just being closed in. Yeah. The other thing that got added is over here, it's hard to tell, but that's actually going to be a walkway from the back of the house to the front of the house. So just another way of um, entering into the backyard. And the other cool thing is... Our septic tank ended up having to go down here, um, and there was quite a bit of rock. So what ended up happening is um, all the fill from when they, they dug out that area has now ended up up in this area, which is pretty nice because what it's done is actually leveled out this whole back area and it's given us a lot more um, usable space. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how, how that will evolve um, as the project continues. Oh, and sadly, these windows got cut. Um, because once it went to engineering, um, they obviously have to do... Um, make sure that it's sound and stable. Um, mm -hmm. So they had to put all uh, bracing across yeah, that Yes, that's area. an issue, because in our garage at the moment, there's no natural light, so it's going to be yeah. a bit weird. But yeah, I mean, we'll during, the, during the day, like we should be able to have it open. We actually want a polycarbonate across the whole garage section so that it looked like the building was floating. But um, because of all the bracing, uh, that effect wouldn't work quite as well. So we kind of cut that one. Um, it's still pretty similar from the front. Yeah, it is still very true to the original concept. Um, it's just that 
once you actually translate it into um, a workable building, um, things do have to change. So you have to be ready for that. Um, what we did here was we had a three-quarter wall. Uh, so originally, I think it was going to the ceiling. Um, it was important for us to lower that so the air could circulate uh, freely between the spaces. Mm. Um, so like when you open up the, the, the big living room door and all the louvers, um, it allows the air to flow through. But um, louvers, louvers are amazing. Um, when you open them, it's 100% open, whereas a sliding window or something like that, it's only going to be 50% at max. So we put plenty of those in. There is an expense to it, but I think it's quite worth worth it. And that's really about it. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. But um, this house really represents the values that we were seeking. Um, and that's the whole reason why we ended up getting a tailored product, pretty much. Mm. Um, it yeah. does cost money. But I think that upright, um, that upfront investment is quite worthwhile because it gives you so much direction uh, later down the track. Um, and everyone else, when we went to project builders, it was we were going to have to compromise what we wanted to fit the house designs that they already had. Um, yeah, they weren't quite adaptable enough. No. And they love building on the ground, which means crazy, crazy platforms and stuff like that. Yeah, and just sort of obliterated. Um, the aspect of what actually drew us to that block of land in the first place. I, I mean, there are project builders out there that can do elevated houses, but it's it's pretty rare. Um, they just do the cheapest option. So this actually suited us and we fell in love with it. And that's why we've carried through with it for the last three or so years. And you'll notice on this plan, Haha, uh -huh, there's a fireplace. <laughs> yeah, one of Chris's requests. I finally got one of my requests. Yeah, let's see how budget goes first. Yeah. Okay, well, um, thanks for joining us, and um, I hope this helps you understand um, our journey. Um, and hopefully it makes it less intimidating for you to take your own. Thank you. See ya. Catch up.